maybe I like to do something with trading. Maybe I don't want to like handle goods, but maybe importing, exporting stuff like in between maybe Japan and the U.S. Since I could speak both languages, import, export. Hmm. I think I'd like to own a bookshop because I really like reading, and、um, I know a lot about books. And actually, a lot of times when I go into secondhand bookstores, I think I would be really good at choosing books. You know, when people come to you with like big suitcases full of books, I think I'd be pretty good at selecting the ones that、uh, would sell and the ones that would not. Mm, I'd like to own a business that's、uh, connected with travel in some way. I, mean, I love to travel myself, so if I could find some way to combine、uh, my favorite hobby with a way to make money, that would be great. Yeah, I'd really like to have、um, my own cafe, like a not, but not just like a regular cafe, like like a, a cool cafe, like an art cafe, and people can come in and. Uh, read books, drink coffee, and、uh, just relax with some good music. I would love to own a smoothie business because actually I really love smoothies, especially the banana flavored smoothies. And I think it'd be a good business to have. It would be fun. You could hire your friends, and also it's not enslaving the third world. You could buy organic fruit and make the fruit. And make smoothies and just make people happy.、Uh, I would own.、Uh, I would like to own a scuba diving slash,、uh, I guess, Ayurvedic spa type business, which would、uh, be hopefully located on a tropical island where one could enjoy the underwater world and also have a relaxing vacation,、uh, learning about Ayurvedic practices of eating and yoga. Hmm. Yes, I have actually.、Um, it was just、uh, shortly after I got my driver's license. I was driving in a parking lot, and I was going through a small intersection. And、um, I looked to my left, and there was a car coming towards me. And it was actually going a lot faster than I thought. So it、uh, basically slammed right into my car. Thankfully, neither myself nor my sister were injured. Yeah, I had an accident when I was nine years old. A car accident. I stole the key from my mom, and I drove this car. Although I couldn't reach the pedals, I had to go down, reach the pedal, come up, and then look at the window that to see where I'm going. And I hit the garage of one one of my neighbors、uh, so hard that the、uh, the door was. Uh, fallen and I was on the the car was on the、uh, garage and that was my accident. It was really scary because few minutes earlier, childrens were playing there and their mom asked them to wear socks because they were going to a party. And as soon as they entered the house, this accident was、uh, happened. So they were screaming. I was screaming. It was scary. I have been in an accident one time. I was making a left turn, and the car hit the side of my car. It was coming straight at me. I shouldn't have made the left turn. It was completely my fault, and we had to pull over. And the car, my car was ruined, and the front of their car was ruined. And the police had to come, and I was really shaken up. I was actually only 16 at the time, and after that, I decided to become a very careful driver. And I have not been in an accident since. A serious accident. Okay.、Um, when I was in Thailand, I rented a, a motorbike for the day、um, with my girlfriend actually, because we were we were planning to to、uh, to drive to the other side of the island to do some diving.、Um, I don't know if you've been to Thailand, but on the 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 roads were they were not very、um, not very safe, and I started to slide. And then、uh, I I tried to control the bike,、uh, but unfortunately it, it slipped from under me and、uh, we both fell off off the bike.
Yes, I have. When I was uh, 16, I was riding my bicycle home from work, and uh, somebody else pulled their bicycle in front of me, and I hit them and flew over their handlebars and broke my arm. Uh, yes, actually, I have. Um, it was a car accident, and uh, it wasn't very serious, but... Uh, it was supposedly my fault, although I tend to disagree. Um, but I was pulling out into a busy street and uh, didn't see that there were two lanes. And um, yeah, the car came up and hit me on the side. Um, that was it. It was my fault. I had to pay. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, I hope if they are driving cars, they're run by on hydrogen or perhaps something else, electricity perhaps. But I really hope we don't use gasoline anymore. I do think in 100 years people will be driving cars, but probably not run by gasoline, but perhaps by other substances. Could be biofuel, could be... Uh, something more, uh, uh, nuclear energy or, or solar power? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I would, uh, I suppose it's, it's projecting what I want people to do, but I'm a big believer in public transport. And I think as um, public transport systems get uh, better and faster and more more effective. Um, people will stop using their cars because they are going to get, you know, more expensive. So f when you get into economies of scale, uh, people are going to realise they're going to save money by using public transport, mass transit, things like that. So in about in a, in a hundred years, I suppose they won't be using cars that often. Yeah, I think they'll drive cars, but I think the technology will be much more efficient. Hopefully we won't be using oil anymore. Uh, hopefully we'll be using a much cleaner energy, like maybe electricity or even um, solar-powered cars would be really cool. But I think that's far off in the distant future. In a hundred years, I don't think anybody will drive. I think we'll either be flying or we'll be riding on trains or boats. I don't think cars are going to last much longer. I think people will definitely drive cars in a hundred years. I hope that the cars are more environmentally friendly. I do think that we're going to have a gas shortage and an oil shortage, and so therefore we're going to need to look for other methods to fuel the car, whether that be electricity or, or solar power or even vegetable oil. I don't know. I suppose there's advantages of both. Uh, working for a small company, you might have more space and more time to uh, work on projects that you're interested in. But a big company, I suppose, you might think you have more job security. So on balance, I think I'd prefer to work for a big company. But I've worked for small companies in the past, and uh, there was a bit more freedom involved in those jobs. I actually want to try working in a big company. Uh, the first job I got, it was a, quite a small company. There were only about maybe 1,000 people, and my uh, department only had about six people in it, and it was quite small. I had to work under the president, which was quite stressful. So if I work in a bigger company, I guess I don't really have to work under the president and go under all that stress. For now, I think I would like to work for a big company because I'm really new to the working because I'm a newly graduate and I think it would be nice to learn all the system in the big company first. I've worked for big companies and for small companies and they all have their own problems. But uh, in general, I prefer working for small companies. Well, I'd rather have my own business, to be honest, but if I had to choose between a big company and a small company, I think I'd prefer a small one. Because I think if you work for a big company, often you get lost in the shuffle and you 
you become just a number rather than a real person. So if I had to choose, I'd go with a small one. I used to think that a small company would be a much nicer environment to work in, but having actually worked for a small company, now I'm much more in favor of big companies and standard working hours and standard working conditions. Definitely. Definitely think it should be free. Um, I think, for one, depending on where you live, we all pay enough taxes that I think this is a privilege that would be enjoyed. And I also think if it were to be free, students would really think hard about what they want to do. And let's say if they couldn't figure it out at an early age, they could join at any point in time and it wouldn't be a stress. And everyone would have that freedom to, to be whatever they want. So, yeah. I don't think college education should be free because students might not put as much effort that they are doing now because it's, they know it's free and they can do it any time they want. I think college education should be free. If, if people want to study, they should, be, they should be given the opportunity to learn regardless of how much money they have. So I think it would be a good system if students can fly and register without paying the fees. Um, I think people should have to pay for further education because otherwise a, a lot of people will just go to school and then they'll go to university and, and just study and it, it, I think it takes away the importance of a university education. So if people have to pay more then I think it makes them more motivated and yeah it makes it makes uh, qualifications, a degree more important. Yes, I definitely think college or university should be free. When I went to university in the UK, um, the government paid for all of the fees for any academic course that people wanted to study at that time. I think that college should be free for those who deserve it. In other words, based on merit, if a, if a child has worked really hard and shown that they have high goals and that they want to do well and use college to succeed, then I think that college should be free. But I don't think it should be free for those who haven't shown in high school that they care about school or that they care about learning. Hmm. I like rugby. I like watching rugby. There's a lot of actions. There are a lot of nice looking guys. You know, nice movements. Um, also, the pace of the game goes fast, so a lot of scoring, and yeah, I enjoy it. Well, I was born and raised in England, so I enjoy English sports, cricket and soccer. I played rugby uh, when I was young. Uh, but I also like things like snooker as well. If I'm going to play any sport at all, it's probably going to be something like snooker. I love playing rugby. I, I, I can't do it very often, and usually when I do it, I end up hurt for a week, but it's a good kind of pain, and uh, I like team games very much, so rugby is a good game to play for that. I love to play tennis. I think it's a really fun sport, but I actually don't like to watch it. I think it's pretty boring to watch. And I love to watch basketball. I think it's so cool to watch the ball go back and forth. It's very fast-paced. And I love watching the players dunk. But I hate to play basketball because I have really bad motor reflexes and I can't dunk. I'm not a big sports fan. I have to say I don't, I don't really enjoy team sports or organized sports, but for myself I enjoy swimming, especially in the ocean, and something I can do by myself like yoga. What sports do I like to play? Well, in terms of exercising, I like to cycle. Um, I'm not so keen on competitive sports anymore, though I used to play soccer, football quite a lot. In terms of watching sports, I really like watching football, soccer.
Um, I think if we're speaking about a a leader of a of a country, then first of all, I think the person has to be strong. They have to um, they have to have their ideas of what they want to do, and they have to do it. But at the same time, they have to also be adaptable to situations. Um, but mainly, I think uh, the, the the person yeah has to be strong and has to be able to deal with uh, stressful situations and make important decisions at the right time. I think that a good leader needs to be charismatic to get people to trust them and to like them. I also think that a good leader needs to be responsible and be aware of the people that are around them to be able to help them. A good leader, I guess uh, a good leader has to be confident enough in his or her own decisions to choose a direction and just go for it um, and inspire confidence in the people who are following him or her. But at the same time, they have to be open-minded enough to recognize when they've made a mistake. So I would say those are the two things, confidence and open-mindedness. A good leader, I guess, is someone who is compassionate, but who also knows how to lay down the law. Um, someone who can affirm, who can um, enforce the rules, but also uh, is able to listen to his workers and the people underneath him, or her. I think a good leader needs to be firm, decisive but also willing to listen to the opinions and ideas of the people who work beneath him or her. Mm, a good leader. Well, I mean, number one, I would say, would be compassion and understanding for the people that you're leading, but also having charisma and um, self-confidence is really important. Uh, my favorite gadget's the computer. I can't live without internet or emailing or Skyping. Um, I always talk with my friends over Skype, like uh, domestic and international. I always also do a lot of internet shopping. I love shopping on Amazon.com. My favorite gadget is a cell phone. I really like being able to contact my friends at any time I want to, and I use it so often to as a dictionary or to talk to my friends or to email my friends or even to take pictures. To tell you the truth, I'm not much of a gadget person. However, this little 8 gigabyte hard drive thing that I have here has really come in handy. Um, it's thin and light and saves all my documents. I'm not really all that fond of electronic gadgets, but I guess the only one I use regularly now is my cell phone in Japan. Uh, when I first got my cell phone, I was really excited because it was years ahead in technology from what we have in Canada. So that's really the only gadget I use right now. I really love this electric hot pot I have. When I get home, I fill it full of water, I plug it in, I throw in some tea, and then I already have relaxed. Okay, uh, my favorite gadget is uh, a handheld game uh, system that I just got. But I didn't buy it for the games, I bought it for the software you can get that turns it into an electronic dictionary. And it actually recognizes your handwriting so you can write on the screen and look up words that way. It's really fun. Oh, probably somewhere between six and seven hours a night. It depends uh, what I'm doing in the evening or what I have to do in the morning. But uh, I usually go to bed uh, not too late, but I usually have to get up pretty early. So usually around six or seven hours a night. I try to get eight hours of sleep, but usually I only get six hours of sleep because I wake up probably every two or three hours because I grind my teeth and it wakes me up. I think probably I get about six or seven hours sleep a night on average. Um, 
yeah, when I'm busy with stuff outside of work, like organizing concerts or uh, just other stuff, I probably get less, maybe like four or five. <laughs> that depends. <laughs> that depends on uh, uh, certain factors, but I'd say usually I I get about seven hours of sleep. But I'm a pretty light sleeper. So if the if uh, my neighbors are being noisy or having a party, I usually don't get much sleep at all. I sleep eight hours a night, and I think that's exactly the time that I can wake up in the morning and feel good about myself, and uh, not feeling sleepy, and I can uh, work very eff efficiently uh, the rest of my day. I try to get eight um, weekdays. Maybe around seven weekends, maybe about ten hours. I love sleeping. I love sleeping in. I love like uh, watching TV in bed. I ride my bicycle. Uh, I like to ride my bicycle around most of the time. If I I'm able to, I'll ride a bicycle to work. Uh, and also, I like to walk everywhere. I, I've never owned a car, so I, I tend to walk a lot of different places. I like to go running two or three times a week, but to be honest, I'm not the best runner. I only, I probably walk for 15 minutes, then run for 10, and then walk for another 15 minutes. But I'm hoping someday I can work up to run, to do running for at least 20 minutes. Um, I like to go to the gym um, a, a few times a week. I like to go to the gym. I I really like running, but uh, at, at the moment it's quite cold outside, so I don't like to to go running outside. So usually I go to the gym and use the treadmill. Uh, every week I go to yoga. I also do some walking. I also do some push-ups every day. But that's about it. I also try to control what I eat. I don't eat that much oily food or I don't drink much alcohol. So I guess that's how I try to keep fit. Uh, to stay in shape, I try and walk a lot is one thing. And also I cycle into work two or three times a week. Now that might not sound like much, but I actually work on top of a mountain. So uh, that's a fair amount of exercise. It takes me about 30, 40 minutes exercise <laughs> including um, going to the gym um, doing yoga uh, dancing hiking whatever whatever physical activity I can get my hand on that doesn't involve really going to the gym would be preferable oh definitely I think healthcare should be free Everyone should have access to uh, everyone should have free access to a doctor at any time. You shouldn't um, avoid going to the doctor because you are afraid of how much it will cost. It sh you, there should be universally free health care. I'm British, and health care pretty much is free in the UK. Uh, it's what I've grown up with, and uh, it's somehow inbuilt into me that I think health care should be free for everyone. Yes, I definitely think healthcare should be free. Um, from Canada, and uh, we we do pay high taxes, but this allows us also to be able to enter into a hospital and not pay for for what's wrong with you. And um, the services are not bad. You might have to wait a little while, but anyone can come in and and get treated. So I think that's a good. I definitely think healthcare should be free. I think it's a really big tragedy right now that a lot of nations don't have free healthcare for children and for people in general. I think it's really sad when one child is able to have their disease treated but another child has to suffer. Yes, I believe healthcare should be free. Um, it's it's one of the things that everyone needs. So 
I think if you pay into a system and if you're part of a society, then one of the things that the society should give back to you um, is healthcare. If you want fantastic top-of-the-range uh, coverage, then you should have to pay for that. But basic healthcare should be free. I don't think it should be free. I think we should pay a certain amount of money because if it's for free, I think the quality of our health insurance is going to you know, go down. So but I don't think it should be like that high like in the States where nobody actually can buy the health insurance. So I think Jap actually Japan has a quite a good uh, system. Uh, well, space travel is a uh, very exciting, a very wonderful thing. Uh, it's pretty hard to argue that we need space travel if you have people living in poverty in your country. Perhaps we need to have our priorities set first. I don't think the government should pay for space travel. I think there are too many problems here on Earth that the government needs to deal with first and not look and spend their money on space travel. There's so much disease and war and education problems and healthcare problems that the government really needs to focus more on the people on, that are on Earth. Space travel is really important. There's two reasons for that. One, we're not being very nice to our world, and pretty soon it's going to reject us. But more importantly, space travel is fun. Why wouldn't we do it? Well, I think space travel is really exciting and will be important in the future, but I think most important is to look to the problems that we have on our own planet right now. So we should resolve things such as environmental issues that we need to deal with before we look beyond our own home. No, I don't think government should invest money in space travel. I think the best way to do it is to show that space travel can be commercially viable. And the people that are actually leading the way now in terms of like space travel and space hotels and commercializing space are private industry. So I think that the government should provide support for that and allow them to get some kind of commercial protection on that. But uh, I think uh, commercial businesses are the people that are going to do the best job in that, in that sense. Yes, to some extent, I don't think it should be a priority. But I do, I do think it's worthwhile knowing what's what surrounds us, either underwater or above in the sky. Um, I think they should probably focus on more important matters first. But yeah, perhaps a little bit of the budget should go towards that.